Happy Friday. How we doing? How you doing today, huh? I had to fix myself up today. My entourage is not available. Where are you? Oh, she's busy. Excuse me. These people are very important. When they're busy, they're busy. I have to make an appointment to see them. Sometimes I have to I have to make an appointment to see my own entourage. What is wrong with that picture? Happy Friday anyway. It's going to be a great day today. Say this with me. The rest of my life, the rest of my life. is the best of my life. And the best of my life is the rest of my life. Hey, today is offering day. Today's the day that everyone helps us send this message around the world. And believe me, it's going around the world. And everybody helps us send these books out. We send out, we give away thousands of books. We mail them out. We mail out so many books, we have our own postage machine. Don't we, Mary? Yeah. We have a postage machine. We just put the envelope, do 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 instead of putting all the stamps on. Before, we were trying to send out hundreds and thousands of, of books, and we were putting stamps on every envelope. Not anymore. We are a high-tech organization. We are on the cutting edge of evolution. Evolution? Cutting edge of technology, I mean. And evolution, too. Huh? And evolution, I might add. Some of us are very highly developed. You people are highly developed. How many of you know that, that people are, at the, are the most treasured creation of God and the most highly developed? Therefore, people are on the cutting edge of evolution, which, of course, doesn't exist. There is no such thing as evolution. It's all creation. God made us. He created us. Amen. How in the world could anybody expect anything different? Anyway, today is offering day. But here's the deal. When you make an offering today, I want you, please, call me because I want to speak the word-for-word word blessing that God told us to speak over people in our ministry. He gave us this blessing to speak. He said, you speak this blessing Word for word, this is how you will do it. And when you do, you're putting my name on the people. And I will bless them. Once I speak this blessing over you, word for word, the way God gave it to us to do, he is obligated to bless you, and he does. I'm telling you, we just see lives change. Blessings, when I first got a hold of this and started doing this in our church, the blessings just rained down on our church. And they rained down on our partners. Amen. So you call me. Also, if you need any prayers answered today, please call me. I want to talk to you today, right along those lines, about three reasons why I get so many prayers answered. Now, I don't know all there is to know about prayer. But I do know a little bit. I wrote this book, How to Pray. The reason I wrote this book, How to Pray, is because I realized most people don't know how to pray. They just pray. You say, well, Pastor Jim, there's no right way or wrong way to pray. Run, 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 run. Oh, yeah? I'll tell you how you can judge whether or not a person knows how to pray. If they're sick and broke, they don't know how to pray. Amen. We judge everything based on results. Don't tell me what a great salesman you are if you can't make a living selling things. Amen? I had people come in to my office and say, say, Mr. Jim, you know, I'm a great salesman. And I say, oh yeah? Uh, who'd you work for before? I call him up and they said he couldn't sell nothing. Well, he's not a great salesman. A great salesman is somebody who sells something. A person who knows how to pray is a pray person who gets results, who gets answers to their prayer. And I do. Like I said, I don't know all there is to know about prayer, but I do know a little bit about it. I know enough to get my prayers answered. 
And I can get your prayers answered too. You wouldn't believe the praise reports that come into this ministry. I'm telling you, people literally call me every single day. Say, Pastor Jim, you prayed for my stomach and it's all better. Pastor Jim, you prayed for my head. Pastor Jim, you prayed for the rent. I got the rent. Now you prayed for a car, I got a new car. You prayed for a job, I got a new job. Why is that? I'm going to tell you. I tell everybody, I don't hold nothing back. Amen. I don't keep these secrets. I want you to know. Number one reason I get every get prayers answered is because I very seldom ask God for anything. I decree it. I decree it. Job chapter 22, verse 28 says, You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. You decree it. You declare it. God will do this for you. When I say that, God is going to do it for you if you keep your mouth shut. Don't say, well, Pastor Jim, how's that going to happen? The minute you say something like that, that's doubt and unbelief. Just be quiet. Let my words work. Now, is that scriptural to do? Let me show you. Let me show you. I never say anything like this unless it's scriptural. Hannah, 1 Samuel chapter 1. I'm telling you what. You read this chapter before you call me. Hannah could not have a baby. She was beyond the age of having children. She was crying in the temple. And the priest thought she was drinking, Eli. She said, no, I'm pouring out my heart before the Lord. He looked at her and he said this. Did he pray for her? Did he ask God to bless her? Did he ask God to give her prayer, to answer her prayer? Did he do any of that? No. Look what he did. He says, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant you your petition that you have asked. Go in peace. Shalom. Go in peace, he says. He says to her, he, he didn't say go in peace. Uh, in, the, in the Hebrew translation, he would have said shalom. The God of Israel give you what you want. Did he ask God? Or did he say God would? He said God would. And God did. She went home and got pregnant. People, I'm telling you. I don't pray for sick people. I speak over sick people. That's why so many of them get healed. And so many of these you call these other prayer lines, they stand there and they pray and they pray and, they, and nothing happens. I speak it. I decree a thing and it shall be established. I read that in the Bible and I said, okay. And I read about Eli and I said, whoa, did Eli have the authority to tell Hannah that God would give her what she wanted? Did he have that authority? Apparently he did. Because he did it and it worked. Number two, I know my authority. I know my authority. Believe me, the minute you call me and ask me and tell me what you need, you have given me the authority to speak it into your life. And I do, especially if you're a partner of this ministry. Then I have the pastor's authority to do that. We're going to talk about the pastor's authority next week. This is a wonderful subject. Very few pastors in this country have any idea of what they can do or how they should be doing it and what kind of power they, have, that they actually have at their disposal. I use mine for the good of the people, for the good of our partners, for the good of the people in our church. I know who I am. I know 
what I can do. And I know what I can't do. It's very important to know what you can't do. The minute you call me and say, Pastor Jim, I got a stomach ache today. You have given me the authority to speak to your stomach. And I say, be healed in Jesus' name. People get healed. People call me with bladder infections. People call me with headaches, migraines. I tell them to leave. I don't pray about it. I say, leave them in Jesus' name. People call me about the rent. Pastor Jim, I need money to pay the rent. I say, yes. In the name of Jesus. They get it. Go, whoa, Pastor Jim, I got it. Yes. Because I know what I can do. I do the same thing that Eli did. That's all I do, people. It's not anything so spectacular. It's not anything that I thought of. It's not anything that's never been done. I just do what he did. And I do. And it works. I get the same results as he did. Somebody get a hold of this. Pastors can do this. If they know who they are. If they know this authority. If they have faith. You have to have faith in your own words. You got to know that when you say something, I'm telling you what, it's going to happen. It's like my mother standing there with a fly swatter in her hand saying, get to bed. She knew what was going to happen. People would trip over each other going up the stairs. Amen. Because she meant business. Number three reason why I get so many prayers answered is my faith in the name of Jesus. I have incredible faith that when I use that name of Jesus, what I say is going to happen because I have somewhat of an understanding. I don't understand everything about it. Nobody does. But, I, but, but the little bit I do understand about it is I understand a little bit about power behind that name. I know what is behind that name of Jesus. When I use that name of Jesus, all of heaven, God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, all the angels, mass immediately to make it happen. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee bows of things in earth, under the earth, and above the earth. Every evil spirit bows to that name when I use that name in faith. And I use that name of Jesus to decree that God is going to provide your needs for you. I, we had somebody Sunday come into our church, bless her heart, broke, busted, disgusted, homeless, staying in a motel, almost out of money. I said, God is going to take care of you. Now, let's just believe that. Crying, oh my God. I said, listen, stop. God is going to take care of this for you. That's all I said. And you know what? Is God taking care of it, Mary? Yes, he is. It's all been taken care of. God took care of it. Now, he didn't do it the way... I would have thought he was going to do it. I would have never imagined he was going to do it the way he's doing it. But you know what? That's not up to me. The only thing that's up to me is for me to say it. Then God does it the way he wants to. But believe me, he will do it. And in this case, he had to do it very quickly because this woman was in a motel and she was out of money. He did it very quickly. I mean, within an hour he was providing for her. Wasn't he married? Within an hour, he was providing for. Hey, I was out of, I'm out of time today. Please share this video with everybody you know today on this happy Friday. Don't forget offering day today. Please call me because I want to speak the word for word blessing over you today. I want you to go into this weekend with the blessing of God upon you. Please call me. I love you. I care about you. And I will see you back here on Monday.